Welcome back to my channel. This is Akshay Ruben. So, in my today's video, we'll be discussing about the fundamentals of electric field and potential. And there's an another video coming, the part two, in which we'll be discussing in detail of electric field and potential. Let's get into the video. What is matter? Physical substance which occupies space and has mass is called matter. Any substance which has which has mass and occupies space is matter. What is matter composed of? Molecules. What is molecules composed of? Atoms. And what is atom composed of? Positively charged protons, negatively charged electrons, and neutrons which has no charge. Atoms are composed of three uh, components which is the positively charged protons, negatively charged electrons, and neutrons which has no charge. What are the regions in an atom? The central core of the atom is called the nucleus and the space around the nucleus is called extra nucleus. What are the elements inside the nucleus? Protons and neutrons. Since proton has a positive charge and neutrons has no charge, the charge of the nucleus is positive. What are the elements in extra nucleus? The electrons which is revolving around the nucleus in orbits just like our solar system how the planets revolve around the sun in their orbits the electron revolve around the nucleus in its orbit what is the charge of an atom so atom has no charge since it has equal number of positive protons and equal number of negative uh, electrons so the positive and negative cancels out so there'll be no charge in atom what is the maximum number of electrons in an orbit the number of electrons each orbit can hold can be calculated using the formula 2n square so where n is the orbit number so if it is the first orbit will be 2 into 1 square which is 2 so the first orbit carries 2 electrons it's that way now what is atomic number of an atom atomic number is the total number of protons in an atom which is always equal to the number of electrons what is the mass number of atom the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the nucleus so the number of positively charged protons plus the neutral charged uh, neutrally charged neutrons in the nucleus will be the mass number of an atom draw the atomic configuration of copper now we'll discuss how do we do the electronic or the atomic configuration of an element. Copper has an atomic number 29 and mass number 63. It's the it's an isotope of copper. First we'll calculate the number of electrons that should be in the first shell. So first shell is n equal to 1 n equal to 1 so the number of electrons will be 2n square as we already discussed so it will be n into 1 square which is 2 so in the first orbit there are 2 electrons as you can see in the diagram as well now n2 we replace the n here with 2 so it will be 2 into 2 square which is 8 so in the second orbit there are 8 electrons then n3 so n is replaced as 3 so 18 in the third shell there is 18 electrons now to calculate the number of electrons in the last shell the fourth shell 
we need to add all of these 2 plus 8 plus 18 which will be 10 18 28 so we'll add these minus the atomic number so 29 is the atomic number minus all of these that's 28 so 29 minus 28 is 1 in the last shell there will be only one electron now what is binding energy the positively charged protons inside the nucleus attracts the negatively charged electrons by a force called binding force we know that the unlike so they attract each other so similarly here also the positively charged protons attract the negatively charged electrons with a force that force is called binding force now, electrons stay in atom due to this force they stay in their orbit due to this force. The energy associated with this force is called binding energy. Why electrons are not moving towards the nucleus? If there is binding force that is pulling it towards the nucleus, the positively charged nucleus, why is it not going into the nucleus, rather it is preferring to revolve around the nucleus in the region uh, around the nucleus. Since electrons are revolving around the nucleus in orbit, the centrifugal force balances the binding force. Hence, the electrons continue in orbit. They do not run towards the nucleus because there is a centrifugal force which balances the binding force. A centrifugal force which acts opposite to the binding force in the opposite direction. Hence, it makes the electrons stay in its orbit and continue. Thus, binding energy remains same for all the electrons. Binding energy is more in electrons revolving in the first orbit because it is close to the nucleus and less in the electrons revolving in the last orbit as it is far away from the nucleus. So as we know according to Coulomb's law, the force is inversely proportional to the square of distance. So as the distance increases force decreases they are inversely proportional what are valence electrons electrons in the outermost orbit which experience less binding energy the electrons in the last orbit or the last shell is called valence electrons uh, so in copper we have one electron in the last shell so that's called the valence electron what are free electrons electrons in the outermost orbit experience less binding energy and easily come out of the orbit as free electrons so like in copper we saw there was one electron in the valence shell or the last shell the valence electron which is far away from the nucleus so the binding force on that electron will be less so it can easily come out as free electrons it easily come out as free electrons next is how to charge a body all matter are neutral having equal number of protons and electrons if you remove electron from the neutral body it becomes positively charged that is in the valence um, electron the valence electron can easily come out as a free electron so if you uh, remove that electron from the nucleus there will be one less electron and there will be more protons so it will be positively charged now it will become a charged body for removing electron against the binding energy, external force or external energy has to be applied. To remove this one electron from the valence shell, you need to apply an external energy. What is the unit of charge? It is Coulomb. Coulomb is the charge possessed by 6.24 into 10 to the power 18 number of electrons. I repeat coulomb is a charge possessed by 6.24 into 10 to the power 18 number of electrons
What is the charge of one electron? Reciprocal of 6.24 into 10 to the power 18, which is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. 6, 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 is the charge of one electron. What are electrical particles? Protons and electrons are the electrical particles. What is energy conservation principle? It's something we learn from a very small age. Energy can neither be created nor be destroyed, but can be converted from one form to another. What is electric potential energy? What is electric potential energy? We have to do work to charge a body. The energy spent is stored in the charged body as potential energy. We do work to charge a body. We have to do work to remove the electron from the valence orbit or valence shell. The valence electron. To remove the valence electron, we have to do a work. The energy is spent to do the work. The energy is spent to remove that electron. The external energy is spent to remove that electron is stored in that as potential energy. As we know, the energy cannot be created nor be destroyed. So it is only transferred from one form to another. The energy you use to pull the uh, valence electron is being stored in the atom in the charged body as potential energy how to charge a body to 2 coulomb remove 2 into 6.24 into 10 to the power 18 number of electrons by spending energy we already know that for one Coulomb, it's 6.24 into 10 to the power 18. So 2 Coulomb, be 2 into 6.24 into 10 to the power 18. Number of electrons has to be removed to charge a body to 2 Coulomb. What is electric potential? Energy spent or work done in charging a body to 1 Coulomb. So electric potential is work done by charge, W by Q. Its unit is volts. Now let's just do a small simple problem so to just clear out our concept. 10 joule of energy is spent in charging a body to 2 joule. What is the electric potential? So it's simple work done by charge. So it's 10 joule by 2 coulomb. So 10 by 2 will be 5 volts. The electric potential will be 5 volt. What is electric potential difference? We're going to learn what is electric potential difference. Potential difference. Difference in electric potential between two charged bodies. Just like you can see here, there's a body A and B. The difference in potential between these two bodies is the potential difference. How much energy is required to move charge from body A to B? Here, from body A to B, how much energy is required? In body A, each coulomb of charge has 5 joules. In body B, each coulomb of charge has 8 joule of energy. Hence, to move each coulomb of charge from body A to B, we have to spend 3 joules of energy. The difference is 3. You can compare electric potential difference with work done in moving charge. Both are same. Hence work done in moving each coulomb of charge from lower potential body to higher potential body is equal to the potential difference. So potential difference is equal to work done in moving each coulomb of charge. The unit is joules per coulomb which is volts. Potential difference is also called as voltage. Define voltage. 
work done in moving each coulomb of charge from lower potential to higher potential. Voltage is the work done in moving each coulomb of charge from lower potential to higher potential. Its unit is joules per coulomb or volts. How voltage is produced in battery? A battery comprises of two metal plates. We can say a battery comprises of A and B. Two metal plates named A and B. These plates are called electrodes, which are immersed in a chemical solution called electrolyte. Due to the chemical reaction, energy is released in the solution. This energy removes electron from plate A charging it to positive potential. When electron is removed, it has more number of protons, so it will be positively charged. And transferring the same to plate B through the electrolyte, leaving negative potential in plate B. So when this electron has been added to plate B, there is more number of electrons in plate B, so it becomes negatively charged. This so potential difference is created between the plates. The energy which transfers each coulomb of electron from plate A to B is called EMF. The energy which transfers each coulomb of electron from plate A to B is called EMF. Unit of EMS, EMF is joules per coulomb, which is voltage. I mean, volts, sorry, or volts. What will happen when a copper wire is connected between the electrodes of the battery, between the A metal and B metal rod? Consider the two electrodes of a battery. One is charged to positive potential and the other is charged to negative potential. We saw that in the previous slide. The positive electrode has shortage of electrons and negative electron has excess of electrons. A copper wire is connected between the this electron. Imagine a copper wire is connected between this positive and negative electron. Copper wire has atoms which has one valence electron in the last orbit that is loosely bound to the nucleus. We know that copper has a valence electron in its last one electron. The positive electrode attracts the valence electrons of the copper atom near to it. Since this atom is now positively charged, it attracts valence electron of the neighboring atom. So first, the positive uh, charged electrode will attract an electron from the copper wire that copper wire atom which is near to it. Now that becomes positively charged since it's losing one electron it becomes positively charged so it will attract the electron from the another one near to it from another atom near to it. So in that case this is continuous it's continuous throughout the wire by passing the electron from the negative they'll reach to the negative when the atom near to negative plates get positively charged it attracts electron from the negative electron now what is electric current the flow of electrons from negative electron to positive electron is called electric current we saw how the electron flows from the negative electrode to positive electrode due to attraction. This is called electric current. In olden days, scientists believed that current is due to flow of positive charges. Hence, the direction of current is assumed to be from positive to negative electrode. Current believed to be due to the flow of positive charge is called conventional current. Actual current due to flow of electrons is called electron current. But still we use the old conventions. Thus, current is directed flow of electrons. Now defining electric current. Rate of flow of charges. Electric current is the rate of flow of charges, that is I equal to charge by time, Q by T. And it's 
coulomb per second which is ampere the SI unit of current is ampere now in this video you can see how the electrons flow so there's a positive this is the positive terminal of a battery and this is the negative terminal so the positive terminal attracts an electron from the atom close to it probably here so when an electron is given to this it becomes positively charged so it attracts an electron from the atom close to that when it attracts, this becomes positively charged, so it will attract from the next one, it will attract from the next one, attracting, 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 then finally they end up attracting electron from the negatively charged plate. Thus, there is a flow of electron from negatively charged plate to the negatively charged terminal to the positively charged terminal. As you can see here, how the electrons are running around in the circuit from negative terminal to the positive terminal. What is electric power? The power is the rate of doing work. Power is the rate of doing work, which is power is equal to work done by time. We know that work done is joules and time is second. So the unit of power will be joules per second or we can call it watts. It's James Watts. So uh, he's the one who found power. So in memorandums of him, we named it watts. Now we know that voltage is work done by charge. So what will be the work done? Work done equal to voltage into charge. When you rearrange the equation, voltage equal to work done by charge, we'll get work done is equal to voltage into charge. Now we're gonna substitute voltage into charge in the power equation. So it will be power is equal to voltage into charge. We know that current is charged by time. So here we have charged by time. So we can replace it by current. So power will become voltage into current. Power is equal to voltage into current. Define electric energy. Energy is total work done, which is the product of power and time. From here we are deriving energy. Energy is the total work done. So when you rearrange the equation to get work done, it will become power into time. So energy will be power into time. Unit is uh, joules or watt second. Power into time will be watt second. Watt and second, so watt second. Larger unit used commercially is kilowatt hour. One unit is kilowatt hour. So that's it. We have discussed the fundamentals of uh, electric field and potential and the support to coming up in which we'll be discussing the uh, discussing in detail about the electric field and potential. So thank you for watching this video.